Welcome back to CFO Weekly, where we're talking with financial leaders about how to build efficiency in their teams, create time for strategy, and ultimately get results with your host, Megan Weiss. Let's jump right in. Today, my guest is Olga Shevrenkova. Olga is the Chief Financial Officer at EVGO, having previously served as the company's Vice President of Corporate Development and Strategy. Olga is responsible for capital structure optimization, as well as finance, accounting, and billing operations. Olga's prior experience includes a decade of investment and transaction advisory services in sustainable infrastructure, including serving as Vice President of Green Tech Capital Advisors, an investment bank solely focused on sustainable infrastructure. Olga has a Master of Science degree in Management, Technology, and Economics from ETH Zurich, and a Bachelor of Science degree in Applied Mathematics and Informatics from Moscow State University. Olga, thank you so much for joining me today. Sure, Megan. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to our discussion, which is focused on two main areas. The first is leading a company in hyper-growth mode and advice for CFOs who are currently facing that challenge. And the second is leading a company through a private equity funding. A CFO plays a critical role here, and it's something that's usually a trial by fire. So, Olga, I'm excited to learn from your experience in these two areas. Let's get started. Tell me about your career progression and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So, I started my career in investment banking as a mergers and acquisitions advisor in Zurich, Switzerland. And I worked for a boutique which was focusing on sustainable infrastructure. It was an American firm headquartered in New York. And after a couple of years being with them in Zurich office, I asked to be relocated to the headquarters to New York. So during my time at this firm, I have covered a number of different markets, which included wind and solar and energy efficiency, and ultimately advanced mobility. And it is through my advanced mobility coverage efforts, I got an interest in electric vehicles and electric vehicles charging, and also got to know EVGO, my current company, and EVGO former investors. I got to know EVGO CEO very, very well, and they have become our client. And at some point it became apparent that it would make sense for me to come on board and work alongside my current boss, Cassie, the CEO, to continue to build EVGO business. So first, a couple of years ago, two years ago, to be precise, I joined as a vice president of corporate development and was first focused on capital raising and analytics and a lot of things around those two areas. But last summer, one year into the job, my predecessor, former EVGO CFO, has left the company and my boss asked me if I want to take the opportunity. So I, of course, immediately agreed, and that has been a a great journey since then, and I continue to fulfill my CFO duties as of now. Wow, that's some amazing experience. So as you look back, are there any particular stories or career moves that stand out in your mind as a turning point in your career? Yes, that's a very good question, and when I look back, I think about two turning points, two major points in my career. And the first one, it's not even a a turning point or a pivot point, but rather a starting point. I have not studied finance in my education. So my bachelor is in applied mathematics and my master's is in management technology and economics. And I've always, when I was younger, always launched a career in tech and have done a few internships and had a part-time jobs in data management and software technologies. And my head was centered around that pretty, pretty heavily. But while being in my last year in my master's degree, I came across a very small firm based in Zurich where I did my master's, which was investing in wind and solar projects. And I decided to come on board and just do an internship. They were nice, they were young, they were exciting. And when I started my internship there, I very quickly realized that that's what I want to do. I really enjoy green technologies and I really enjoy finance. And that kind of gave me this impetus to look for other opportunities. And that's how I landed in sustainable infrastructure investment banking. And the second turning point which I had is was my decision to move to New York. 
it's just opened up a lot of opportunities for me. And I also got to discover that the dynamism, the pace at which things happen here in the United States resonate very well with me and who I am as a person. And I think I'm a, I am where I have to be here. It's great that you've uh, like found your niche. So uh, <laughs> not everyone can say that they have. So tell us about EVGO. What do they do exactly? So EVGO is a, a builder, owner, and operator of fast charging infrastructure for electric vehicles. So I would assume a lot of you have seen a Tesla supercharger out there. So we are doing a very similar thing but for any vehicle. So we are not limited by charging a vehicle of specific model or a vehicle of specific make. Anyone is welcome on our network. And we are the largest US public fast charging network for electric vehicles. We have more than 800 locations in 66 metro markets across 34 states. Just to give you a perspective, we serve more than 220,000 customers, and that is roughly 70% of all non-Tesla EV owners in the United States. So pretty much nearly everyone who buys an electric vehicle gets an account with us. Half of our stations are in California, and that's where we're based in Los Angeles. And this is also where electric vehicles are sold. As of today, California is the most advanced market within the United States. And an interesting fact is that 83% of California population lives within 10 miles drive of an EVgo charger. Wow. That is a tremendous coverage. And we, are, we target right now to focus on the rest of the country as well to increase our coverage over there. But we are building where the cars are a little bit ahead of where the cars are, but follow the market. And so another couple interesting facts about our company is that we are an experienced company, uh, unlike a lot of other startups in our industry, we're the industry veteran. We were founded in 2010 within the energy company called Energy. And that was an experimental project for them just to see how electric vehicle charging will play out. But it quickly, turned into a real business and they realized after a few years that you need to spend a lot of effort and resources to manage it. So they decided to sell it and our former investor vision reached bought it in 2016. And this is when the real management team came on board, myself, my boss, uh, other C-level executives at our company. And we have grown so much on division rich ownership that they started um, a capital raising efforts. That's where exactly I joined. And while doing that, we met our current owner, LS Power, who was so thrilled with the story we have that decided to acquire us. And that's where we are today, one of the industry's oldest company and uh, continues to stay that way. So tell us about your experience with raising capital for EVgo. Yeah, sure. That was uh, quite a journey, um, which lasted for a year. In all honesty, it took us a year until we found our investor. And the difficulty with us or there, the distinct difference of us and many other companies who are trying to raise capital is that it is very difficult to box us into some category. We are what I like to say, a 21st century infrastructure company. So we build smart tech-driven infrastructure. And from one point of view, we do smell and feel uh, and come across as a very typical infrastructure business with high initial capital outlay, relatively low scalability of revenues. You have to build more charges to create more revenues, recurrent cash flows. You do buy widgets and you put them into the ground and you, you wait until the revenues are being realized. But we are also, from the other point of view, we're a very typical tech company. We are driven by technology innovation and our revenues are in a very large part driven by new technology adoption. People have to adopt new electric vehicles. People have to adopt new ways of living their life by owning an electric vehicle and charging it. And we are 
also our strategy is focused around tech investments, which facilitate customer acquisition, customer retention, drive innovation, create accredited revenue streams. So all of that is very techy. And so when we started taking those meetings, those first investor meetings, we realized that we were too boring for tech investors because tech investors, they like this, they like the growth, they like the company, but the fact that you have to spend your money as a tech investor on buying equipment and putting it to the ground completely turn them off. This is not what they used to do. From the other point of view, we were too high risk and too exotic for traditional infrastructure investors. So traditional infrastructure investors have absolutely no problem on spending their money on putting widgets into the ground, but they are a little bit perplexed by unknown and by the fact that there is a technology adoption risk and um, customer acquisition risk. And that's just, that's just a completely uncharted territory for a lot of them. So what we needed is some form of an intersection, an investor who will understand both sides of the story. And we were quite lucky by finding our current investor, LS Power, who comes from a traditional uh, power infrastructure sector. They have done a wide array of investments in transmission and distribution assets and in power generation, they understand power. But also they themselves already a couple of years ago, even before meeting us, they decided we want to become more techy. We want to invest in 21st infrastructure, we, 21st century infrastructure. We understand that this is the future. So when we met them, the feeling was mutual and we decided to go with each other. So it seems the world always wants to be able to fit things into a nice, neat box. So what advice would you give for companies out there looking to raise funds who, similar to EVgo, don't fit neatly into a single vertical industry? All right. So a couple of things which I would recommend, uh, just judging by our experience, dealing with capital raise for the companies which you actually can't fit into any prefabricated box. And I think the number one is try to take as many meetings as you can. It oftentimes feels like this next meeting will be a waste of time. This potential investors will never do that. My recommendation will be just take a meeting. You never know who will fall in love with you and you never know if the relationship will work out and maybe the investment won't happen now, it will happen in the future, or maybe this meeting will lead to an introduction to someone else. So as many meetings as possible. The second advice I could give is try to have robust data points at your fingertips. Try to be as confident and cohesive as you can because that actually might turn the scale into your favor, especially in situations when your counterpart or the person you're having a meeting with, they don't fully understand your business, they don't fully understand what you're looking for, and being absolutely ready to throw any answer back at them immediately and being confident about it is really a big, big plus. Another one is try to know your audience, adjust the pitch. So I think it's really helpful to do a thorough research on who you're meeting with and try to guess where their concerns might come from. Try to see at what they've been investing in the past, what industries they are interested in, what they said in previous interviews. Luckily, you can Google it all up these days. And try to already proactively, by thinking that that could be their concern, address it in your pitch. Don't wait until they ask a question be first, be first to address a concern. And last, honestly, I think just keep looking for your soulmate investor. It is really important to choose a partner, a long-term partner who you will be comfortable with to build a business and they need to get you, they need to get your colleagues and they need to get what you guys are doing there and they need to be there with you so it is worth to invest time to find that perfect match in my view. Yeah, that's great advice for business and life. 
that's true. <laughs> um, so switching gears a little bit, I've read that one out of 10 startup companies will make it to the fifth year. So what do you think the barriers are that prevent many companies from achieving this milestone? And what can be done to navigate through these tricky waters and make it out as one of those 10%? That is a million dollar question. I want to say that it goes without saying that you have to have the right product at the right time in the right market. And there is tons of literature and tons of conversations centered around that. And I think that is uh, obviously the basics. But what I would like to add to that, again, just judging on my personal experience by working at EVGO and also observing my former customers uh, at investment banking, because some of those companies made it and some of those companies also didn't. What I think is important is to have the right team and the right team starts with CEO and ends with anyone who is a junior in your team. So the team is, a, is, is the whole team, not just an executive team. It is create the business model which is destined to make money and being able to prove it. This is key. This is what investors are looking for and this is what ensures longevity out there. And the last and very important one, I think, is to stay in touch with reality and have very realistic views about your company, about your strengths and weaknesses, and also about yourself and about your own strengths and weaknesses and how you and your business compare to your competitors and to everyone else out there. And having no illusions helps taking right decisions at the right time. And so once you've established yourself as one of those 10%, obviously every successful company outgrows the startup phase and needs to grow <laughs> up. So what advice would you give CFOs or other business leaders who are trying to make the transition from a startup to an established business? That's a really good question. So I think a few important things which I want to highlight here. And the first and absolutely foremost is again, build the right team. And what does right team mean? The right team for taking your startup into an established business is a team of people who are self-motivated, people who care, people who come in and they're willing to create their jobs from ground up, build what their jobs are rather than follow established instructions and procedures. They're not afraid of questioning the status quo and changing it. The attitude of we always did it this way or no one told me is not helpful. It won't get anybody further. But from the other side, also your team needs to be people who are excited by building a professional organization with systems and processes in place, and they're not bored by it, which I think is a, is a key distinction from a startup phase where you probably target to have more people who motiv motivation costs more than that excitement for establishment, which needs to be embedded in a company DNA. And it does take some work to get there. It is not for everyone, we had to take some tough decisions this year, and I'm extremely happy with where we are today. My team is great. Every single person performs to their best. And I'm very lucky they choose to come to work, well, virtually this year, to help if you go grow. The second important thing is processes. It does sound like, a like something very boring, and no one really wants to spend time on it, but that's exactly what distinguishes a startup from a successful established business. You need to have processes which um, are designed with a notion in mind. What if we were a 10,000 employee company and I didn't know every single colleague of mine by name? How will this work? How will we make sure that the order which is placed going all the way through to accounting and a lot of examples around that. So you need clear responsibility definition you need clear understanding, shared understanding between team members on what source of truth for data is, where do I go and look for this number or that number, and I know it's right. And you have to have a very transparent sequence of actions. And again, well understood and share a set of controls and checking points. So everyone in the company knows when I finish this, there is a checking point and someone else will look at it 
so I have to record this or make note of that. It is very important. And the last but not least, which comes out of the processes, I, I would say don't be afraid of using software to automate your business. There is so much organizational software available. And when you're in a startup, it is much easier to just use Excel or emails and everything is easily traceable and a single human can hold in ahead the names of every customer or every, all the orders. It's all very easily detectable. That stopped being the case at some point and uh, you need to rely on, on software and databases to do that job for you. Yeah, that's all three pieces of great advice. So get the right people in the right positions, uh, build mm -hmm. repeatable processes, and use technology to your advantage. <laughs> exactly. So as you look back at the last year, what have been your greatest challenges? And is there anything you would have done differently? That is a very interesting philosophical question. When I look back this last year, which has been a wild ride for many, I wish we have made a few hard decisions sooner than we actually have. And I look back and I definitely define COVID as the key challenge which we all faced. And it is both arranging the work of the company to be distributed since we will still work from home, trying to understand um, how the COVID will impact our business this year and next year. And as of now, we fully recovered our volumes. We are now at the levels of February, but we had no idea when it was March and April and we were observing how our charging volumes dropped day by day on our network. We had no idea when they will recover and what it will mean for our business. And we had to, we had to be very creative around various scenarios we ran. And also unlike a lot of other companies in the market, we really didn't want to go into employee cuts, which we didn't do in the end. We wanted to preserve the value we have built while addressing the unprecedented market drop and unprecedented sequence of events. That was very difficult for us, for all of us and for myself personally, but I'm very happy we are over the bump here. Um, I'm happy where we are today. It seems like the team functions very well working from home and we are actually one of the few kind of California companies who have um, real in-field operations because we have technicians out there checking stations, we have uh, engineers building stations and we have taken all the precaution to make sure these people are safe. That was very hard as well. Um, I wish we could do it faster and maybe more seamlessly but overall I think it worked out quite well. It definitely seems like it, it has and continues to. So last question for you. As a mm -hmm. CFO, what is keeping you up at night? I, I, you might have just touched on it a little with COVID and uncertainty, but is there anything else that you're concerned about these days? Yes, I, uh, I actually want to say that as a company, we're quite lucky because we have a uh, a very well capitalized investor and we don't have to worry about finance and the next phase of our growth. However, we are in a very intense execution and growth mode and interesting that electric vehicle market, so the sale of new vehicles of course dropped throughout the spring and the summer, but what we observed that already in July there were as many sales as an average January, February. So people are back, people are, are buying vehicles and everything points to the fact that we're going to observe an unprecedented market growth over the next couple of years. And we need to be ready for that. We need to execute on our business plan. We need to meet our goals. We need to grow as fast or even a little bit faster than the market. We need to stay ahead of competition and we need to do it while building, continue to build a great team and my favorite systems and processes to be successful and to illustrate operational excellence. But um, it is a, a competitive market and it is a market where a lot of things happen and you have to stay alert to be successful. And I think that's what truly keeps me up at night. Well, actually, 
I wouldn't say it keeps me up at night, but the first thing I think about when I wake up is that how can we execute on our business plan? How can we stay a leading platform? Um, how can we build even more valuable business? Olga, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. That was a very interesting conversation. Yeah, I really enjoyed learning about EVgo and your experience making the transition from startup to established business. Um, so to all of our listeners today, I hope you've enjoyed today's discussion as well. And I hope you'll all tune in next week. Until then, take care of yourselves and have a great week. Have a great week, everyone. If you're ready to boost efficiency and streamline your accounting processes at significant cost savings, it's time to talk with Personiv. Their people-powered solutions have transformed the delivery of back office tasks and general accounting functions for decades, partnering with clients to provide everything from accounts payable to payroll services. See what Personiv can do for you by visiting personiv.com. You've been listening to CFO Weekly presented by Personiv. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts to hear all of our episodes. Want to learn more? Check out Personiv.com. Thanks for listening.